Robert Fuller was the uh, booker and co-owner of the Alabama Territory, Continental. And he called me up and asked me if I knew a guy that would fit the bill, the gimmick for Lord Humongous, if you remember, the big guy with the hockey mask and the leather straps, uh, you know, just like from that Mad Max uh, movie, Thunderdome or whatever it was called. Um, and I said, yeah, I met a guy, you know, when he was just starting out in Memphis, I said, I met a guy in Memphis. I don't know him well, but I really believe this guy would fit the bill. And Robert goes, well, if you say so, I'll accept, you know, on my word. Because back then there was no pick up the phone and send a picture or email, you know, whatever. It wasn't like that back in almost 40 years ago. So I didn't know how to reach Sid. Because back then, again, there was no cell phones or nothing. But I knew he was working construction for a guy named Bobby Jones, who I knew in Memphis. So I uh, tracked down Bobby Jones's phone number and got Sid's number. Called Sid and told him, you know, the situation. He was, oh, man, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. I said, all right, I'll give my notice to, to uh, Bob Geigel. I'll meet you in West Memphis, where Sid lives, on such and such date. And we have a starting date. We start in Gadsden, Alabama. I think it was Gadsden. It might have been Montgomery, one or the other. We start uh, such and such date. So we met in West Memphis. We brought both of our cars to Birmingham, which is the center of that territory at the time. And... Uh, we got a hotel room there, whatever, and uh, we'd take turns driving our cars to various towns. And uh, that's how we got started. Robert hired him right there, first day, and uh, had a good crew. Dutch Mantell, uh, Bob Armstrong, uh, Scott and Steve Armstrong, Tracy Smothers, uh, uh, Nightmare Danny Davis, a bunch of guys. And uh, great territory. And that's how me and Sid got together the first time. I got him his first full-time job in the business and he reciprocated because he's the one who got me my tryout with WWE. You know Sid uh, had some behind the scenes issues at the time with... Uh, yeah, that was the problem. Uh, let me tell you. I love Sid like a brother. I always have, always will. But at that time he was on this high level up there on the you know top echelon. It was like Hogan, Warrior, Sid, Randy Savage. And there I was just happy to be there. You know, still am. So I don't make that kind of money. Never have. I, I'm not saying I should. You know, I'm not a, a guy of that level. So when Sid's like upset and wants to leave, well, he's probably, I don't know what his finances are. It's none of my business. But I'm saying he's probably a millionaire. And I can't afford just to walk out and leave. What am I going to do? Cut grass? I do that on the side anyway. I can't make a living at it. So. It was a little nerve-wracking being in that position. I'd rather be the guy that's steady. I don't want to be on top. So when you, Like the old song says, when you're on the top, there's no place you can really go but down, down, down. I'd rather just make a steady living, which I have for 43 years. And that's all I want to do. Take what I'm given, do what I'm told. Just don't disrespect me. Don't talk to me like I'm a piece of crap, And uh, which nobody has. You know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying in general. Other than that, I'm just, I'm happy being, just being Bruno. And as far as Sid, he told the story that the breaking point for him was with the Ultimate Warrior. He had a series of matches with him, I guess. And he didn't like that the Warrior really didn't care what Sid wanted to do in the matches. And he said that had to do with him walking out. Do you recall any of that? Well, and I'm being honest with you. I'm not giving you a cop out. I do, but I don't. I'll tell you why. One thing about me, and anybody that knows me will tell you, I'm big on staying out of things. This way I don't, well, Bruno said this. Well, Bruno said, tell me, I'd rather stay out of everything. Let those guys hash it out. If it doesn't involve me directly, then, so I do remember the, him being upset. I do remember him leaving that night after the Boston Garden. Up, uh, was it 91, maybe 92? I can't remember. But as far as the exact situation, I'd be lying to you if I said I do remember totally. I honestly don't. I remember the situation, but not the uh, intricacies, I guess the word I'm looking for. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. 
please help me out and like this video. Then click the subscribe and get notifications buttons so you don't miss any of my latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Facebook at The Hannibal TV for more live streams and videos. And while you're at it, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Hannibal TV.